like a newborn baby, don't be afraid to crawl. Remember when you walk, sometimes we fall. So fall, Jesus, fall, Jesus, fall, Jesus, and So if your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus. for a moment of silence as we continue to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together in the sanctuary this morning to, Lord, worship you. And, Lord, what a beautiful song that we just heard the choir uh, lead us to your throne. God, because we can come to you and have life. And we can have it more abundantly. And I pray that, Lord, every person in this room would experience that this morning. I know there, in this room there's all types of different people with different situations represented in their life. Some are rejoicing. Some are crying. Some have heartaches. Some are going through some really tough times. But, God, I pray that, Lord, in this moment, in this sacred hour, that, God, we'd be filled with your peace and your joy in your love. And Lord, may we say it's been good to be in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Pleasant Hill. We're so thankful that you made the decision to join us on this wet and rainy day. You know, if you counted all the weekends up over the last three months, I think we may have one or two that the sun has shined. I'm thankful in everything, but Lord, we need some sunshine. I, I love to spend time outdoors. Uh, but I'm so thankful that you made the decision to battle the weather and come here and worship our risen Lord and Savior together as a family here at Pleasant Hill this morning. And if this is your first time to worship with us, uh, we have a program uh, that we give out when you come into the sanctuary, and I trust that you have one of these. And inside that program, there's a little fold-out portion called a prayer request form. And if this is your first time to worship with us, Please fill this out and place it in the offering plate so we'll have a, uh, some information about you and know how to better minister to you. And also, if you're here this morning, you're part of our family and you're here uh, often, that prayer request form is also for you. You can fill that out, place it in the offering plate, and we'll come alongside you during the week as a, as a staff and pray for you every day at 10 o'clock. Thank you for worshiping with us today at Pleasant Hill. Frank, let's continue to worship through song.
missing him. He's usually on that bench over there and he's crowding me out because he's, he's such a large guy so tall. But you know, a month ago I was in Haiti and I was hanging out with some kids just like y'all. And we didn't have any Wi-Fi or any cell service or anything like that almost all week. But one night we had a little bit of Wi-Fi and Brother Bill FaceTimed me. And he said, David, could you fill in for me on March the 3rd? I said, yes, I'll be glad to fill in for you. I'd love, to, love to, to share God's word, not only with you, but also with the congregation. And I immediately began to think about hanging out with y'all during the children's worship and what I should share with y'all. And I, we're going to talk about prayer today. And I want to ask y'all a question. Um, give me your best definition of prayer. Raise your hand if you have a definition of prayer. Put it in your own words. Okay. Worship. Worship, yeah. Prayer is a form of worship. Somebody. Yes, yes, okay. Anybody else got a definition of prayer? Prayer, what do you think prayer is? Very simple. What do you think prayer is? Don't be shy. Uh, talking to God. Plain and simple, awesome definition. We're going to talk about the priority of prayer this morning, and it's talking to God, just in a conversation. And you know, when I was your age, you know what I remember a lot about prayer? Uh, I, I remember when I was your age and my brother and I, uh, we would get ready for bed and we'd get in our PJs and we'd jump in our bed and my, we would all get tucked into our beds together and my mom would come in the room and you know what she would do? She would talk to us. A lot of times she'd read us a book, uh, Dr. Seuss book or she'd read us, uh, read us a, a Bible story and you know what she did with us right before we went to sleep? She prayed with us. She taught us the Lord's Prayer and then we said a personal prayer. And those are some of the fondest memories I have as a child, spending time with my mom right before I went to sleep. And she, made a, she helped me understand a pattern that we should all abide by, and that's praying at a special time during the day. So if you have a time of your day, maybe in the morning, uh, right when you get out of bed, or maybe when you go to sleep at night, right before you slip off into that, into that nice sleep in the middle of the night, always find time to spend with God because he wants to hear from you. It's talking with God. It's talking with God. Always make sure and spend time with God each day. Let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray these children would be surrounded with your love and feel your presence. And Lord, they would understand just how important it is just to talk to you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> Blessed be the name of all the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we give the holy eyes in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. 
It is such a pleasure to be with you this morning and share God's Word, and uh, it's not often that I get to fill the pulpit uh, with the other um, responsibilities I have, and our pastor is always here, and uh, when he called and asked me if I would fill in, I jumped at the opportunity because I love to share God's Word with God's people, uh, and I know that our pastor, uh, so it's our prayer this morning, is he's helping a, a church that called him back some months ago to uh, fill in and just help them. Uh, this morning, he's, he has some friends in Louisville and some family ties there, and so he's filling in there, and please keep him in your prayers, as well as uh, me as I share God's word with you this morning. Uh, I'm just super excited to be with you and to, uh, to, to share with you this morning, and I want to encourage you to uh, turn to Psalms chapter 5, Psalms chapter 5, and we're going to be talking about how to make prayer a priority in our life. Psalms chapter 5, we'll be reading the first uh, three verses. Psalms chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, and if you don't have your Bible, there should be one there close to you in front of the, uh, in your pew in the shelf there. Something really special happens when God's people read God's word together. You can also follow along on our, on our Jumbotron uh, here in the sanctuary. So if you will, stand with me, and let's read these together. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my sighing. Or in some translations, it says meditations. Pay attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for I pray to you. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I plead my case to you and watch expectantly. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we look into your word, we pray that you had blessed this time of our worship. Uh, God, help me to expound on your word, and may my words be yours and yours be mine. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. Thank you and be seated. Uh, this morning we're going to talk about making prayer a priority and spend some time uh, talking about that. And I just want to ask you a personal question, uh, just a personal question, and, to, and just ask you how much quality time do you spend in prayer each day? If I were to ask you a question and uh, you were to take a survey and somebody were to ask you that question, how much quality time do you spend in prayer each day? Because as, as Christians, uh, in today's world, we can get very, very busy, and sometimes we let some of the most important times in our life not have as much attention as they should. Uh, how much quality time do you spend in prayer each day? I want to share with some statistics with you about uh, how much time adults spend in some other areas of their life. Uh, most Americans, talking about adults, 18 and over, spend between four and five hours a day on their mobile device. Four and five hours a day, and of that time, uh, there's quite a considerable amount spent on social media. Uh, social media meaning um, YouTube. Uh, most adults spend 40 minutes a day on YouTube. Most adults spend 35 minutes a day on Facebook. Most adults spend 25 minutes on Snapchat, 15 minutes on Instagram, and for some reason just one minute on Twitter. Uh, with teenagers it's much more than that, but with adults it's just one minute on Twitter. Now, I want you to think with me just for a second. Over the period of a lifetime, the average time spent on social media as an adult adds up to five years and four months. As an adult, five years and four months spent on social media over the period of a lifetime. Now, I want you to consider what you could do in five years and four months if you spent it another way. You could fly to the moon and back 32 times. You could climb Mount Everest 32 times. You could walk the Great Wall of China three and a half times. You could run 10,000 marathons in five years and four months. Or you could walk your dog 93,000 times. You take your pick. You could do any of that other than spending uh, time on social media. But that's not all. That's not all. Adults spend more time watching television than they do on their mobile device. Uh, the average American adult spends approximately seven years and eight months watching television over a lifetime. Seven years and eight months. Now, as far as teenagers go, uh, the statistics uh, are a little bit uh, larger as far as how much screen time they have. The average American teenager spends nine hours in some type, in front of some kind of screen absorbing media of some kind. Think about that, nine hours every day, your child, your teenager spending uh, looking at their iPhone, looking at an iPad, uh, looking at television, nine hours of screen time, say, Brother David, there's no way they can do that. There's only 24 hours in a day. Well, if you think about it, from the time they wake up, they probably got an hour or two before school. They either turn on the television or look at their phone. Uh, they go to school. They have uh, laptops and things like that they look at. Uh, they, then they come home. They turn on the television or get on their phone or their iPads or whatever gaming system it is. And if they don't go to bed till 10 or 11 at night on, some, on a stretch, uh, you can work in nine hours a day. Now, this is an average of teenagers all over America spend nine hours in front of some kind of screen absorbing some type of medium. Um, and now for children, ages uh, 5 to 12, it's around six hours. So we can see that this little screen, this little device, takes up a lot of our time. Very valuable tool, but takes up a lot of our time. So compared to all of this, compared to all of this, how much time do we spend in quality, dedicated, time set aside with just us and God. Brace yourself. The average Christian in America spends 10 minutes or less, 10 minutes or less, 10 minutes or less, quality time, quiet time in devotion with God. The average Christian spends less than 10 minutes in prayer. That equals to less than six hours a month, three days a year, and seven months, uh, or seven months in a lifetime. It is unbelievable how much time that we devote to so many other things that are, are, are calling out for our attention, but yet we leave out the most important part of our life, and that's spending time with God. Now, if, if 10 minutes a day represents your spiritual life, if 10 minutes a day represents the time that you spend with God each and every, moment, each and every day, if I'm talking to you today, it, if this describes your prayer life, you're literally suffocating spiritually. As a Christian, you're living on a ventilator and barely surviving as a child of God. Now, this doesn't mean that you're lost. It doesn't mean that you're gonna, not going to go to heaven. But it does mean that you're probably not making any kind of impact in this world for the cause of Christ. 
because our prayer life is directly related to how much uh, God can use us and how close we'll be to him and how we can impact this world as a Christian. No wonder our homes and our communities and our schools and our state and our countries are in such a mess. And here's the thing. It's not that we're too busy to pray because everybody has 24 hours in a day. Everybody has the same amount of time. But the bottom line is that we do what we want to do. We do what we want to do. It, it's that we value other activities more than this, uh, more, other efforts and strategies. We, have, we value them more than the call to prayer. And this is a heart issue, and every person in this room must stand before God and say, Dear Lord Jesus, help me take an inventory of my time each and every day. Help me take an inventory of my time of how I use my time. And God, help me to schedule more serious prayer time with you. We have to understand that as Christians, every great movement of God has always started with God's people getting serious about prayer. So I want us to focus on the, making prayer a priority for the next few minutes. Uh, and we look in Psalms, as the psalmist has written in Psalms chapter 5, I want us to focus on making prayer a priority in our life. Because as Christians, if we're only spending 10 minutes a day in prayer, we're missing it. We're missing living a fulfilled life with, with Christ and making a difference in this world. Psalms chapter 5, beginning in verse one, number 1. Listen to my words, Lord, consider my saying. If we're going to make a difference in this life, if we're going to make prayer a priority, we must understand that prayer takes preparation. And we, we see that the psalmist that wrote this passage of Scripture, he is considering his priorities when it comes to prayer. And he is, uh, he is he's reviewing his life and how much time he spends uh, on prayer. And in, in this psalmist decides, and he sorts out his priorities, he decides, as we can see in verse number 3, he says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I plead my case. He gives the morning hours to Almighty God. He, he understands that it's important to go to God on a regular basis. And if you uh, read this passage of Scripture and study it uh, in the original translation, this, act, this time that he wrote down in the mornings, it carries a meaning of something that's systematic. It's something the psalmist is doing over and over and over again. It's not just one morning a week for, for, for 15 or 20 minutes. It's something that he carries out systematically and regularly. He makes it a habit of his life to spend God each and every day. And the psalmist decides to give the mornings uh, to the Lord because he felt like that was the best hours of his day. Uh, Charles Spurgeon spoke on the importance of starting the day with God. He says an hour in the morning is worth two in the evening. While the dew is on the grass, let grace drop on the soul. Now, if I were to ask you, when is the best time of your day? The psalmist has sorted out his priorities, and he understands that the best time of his day is first thing in the morning as the sun is rising. When is the best time of your day, and would you give that to God? Dr. Adrian Rogers said, he said, whenever the best time of your day is, that's when you need to give it to God. You need to offer the best hours of your day to God. Dr. Adrian Rogers said the best time of his day was around 9 o'clock in the morning after he had breakfast, and he, he walked into his study with his second cup of coffee for the day. That was his best time of the day. And he gave that time uh, to the Lord each and every day. Now, I know some of you, uh, right after the sun comes up, it's not the best time of the day. I've been on some mission trips with some of you, uh, and unless you had two cups of coffee in you, I didn't want to speak to you. I could just tell that mornings were not for you. Whenever the best time of day is for you, that's what you need to give to God. We need to offer our best to God always and offer that morning time, whenever it is the best time of the day, uh, to God, set that aside and guard it and not let anything uh, hinder you from spending that time with God. It's so important as a Christian to make an effort to set aside a time of day every single day and guard it uh, and make it happen each and every day Whatever that is for you, whatever the best time of day is, uh, and set that aside to spend with God so you can grow in your relationship with him and make prayer a priority. But number one, and we can see the psalmist, uh, after he sorts out his priorities and, 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 and he sets this time of day, we see that he understood that if we're going to make prayer a priority, that prayer takes preparation. Prayer takes preparation. In verse number one, he says, Listen to my words. Listen to my words, Lord, and consider... My saying, I want to ask you, ask you a question and just give you a scenario. If you had an open invitation 
in a private visit with any of the living presidents of the United States of America, any of them are, that are still alive, if you had an open invitation, current or previous presidents that are serving, an all-expense tri paid trip to meet them in the White House, Air Force One is planning on landing at Columbus Air Force Base. They, all you have to do is drive out there. They're going to escort you to Air Force One. They'll fly you to the nearest airport, escort you to the White House. If you had an invitation to spend a day with the most powerful man in the world, what type of preparations would you make in order to make that visit? I'm sure some of us would probably go out and buy a new, war a new wardrobe of clothes. Uh, if you're a lady, you might go out and I don't know, get your hair fixed, maybe get your makeup redone. Uh, you might buy some new jewelry. You may buy some new shoes. You would make preparation. Some of you might even go as far as taking etiquette class just to make sure that you're behaving appropriately in such a, a prominent figure. But most of us would make some type of effort, some type of pre preparation, and for sure, more than likely, if you had the opportunity to meet the president of your choice that is still alive, you would not miss that visit. And there's no way in the world that you would miss it. You would make a point that you would, you would make that visit and you would be prepared to converse with this, with this president in an intelligent way. Well, bottom line is that we would not miss this opportunity to make the most out of it, but every single day we had the opportunity to go to the presence of Almighty God that is far greater than any president that has ever served. And many times we rush right into his presence unprepared and we rush right out not valuing the time with Almighty God that we can spend time with each and every day. The creator of heaven and earth is waiting to meet with us each and every day. We need to set aside a time and be prepared to meet uh, our creator, our Lord and Savior. The psalmist says in verse number one, he says, listen to my words. Listen to my words. The psalmist is carefully choosing his words as he prays to Almighty God. He's carefully making preparation on what he's about to say and considering what he's going to bring before uh, Almighty God. Now, I can remember as a child, and uh, as my parents would teach us to pray before a meal, everybody has this prayer memorized. God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. Bow his head. Bow our, bow our heads as we are fed. Thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. We remember that prayer and we memorize it. It almost becomes a habit. And we do it at our house all the time. When we come home uh, at the end of a long day and, and uh, my wife has fixed dinner and we sit down around the table or around the, the bar area and my boys are there and we're just getting ready to eat. We're kind of melting down a little bit because our nutrition levels are dropping. And we're getting, and we, all we can think about, all we can think about is digging in. And I'll look over and say, Noah, Jonah, y'all just say the blessing real quick. God is great, God is good. Let's thank for our food. Amen. And we dig in. We just dig in. Now, we did not hear one word that he said. Now, we heard it. We heard it. But did it mean anything? So many times we go through life with prayers that we have placed in memory, but we don't really pray. We just get through it. Just get through it so we can get to the next step in our life. We get through it so we can go on with our meal. Many Christians, I'm afraid, today are not preparing their hearts in their minds to go into the presence of Almighty God. Sometimes we'll say the same prayers over and over and over again. It's good that we're praying. Don't get me wrong. It's good that we're praying. It's good that we're acknowledging and, and pausing and acknowledging that, that God is the creator of the universe and we're thanking him. But we need to be more thoughtful in our prayers. We serve a very intelligent God that wants to hear from his children and consider and be like the psalmist says, listen to my words. The psalmist has put some careful thought into his words. Our prayers should be more than just a resuscitation. Our prayers should be carefully thought out. The psalmist also says, consider my sighing or meditation. Can you imagine the psalmist? And more than likely, uh, King David wrote this. This was after, uh, after he had slain Goliath as a teenager. Uh, Samuel has anointed him as king. He has been fighting many battles. I'm not sure exactly what stage he is in his life, but can you imagine King David, the man chosen after God's own heart, this word meditation literally means whispering and murmurings. Can you imagine, can you just picture King David in his closet, wherever it is, and where he prays every single day. He is bowed down on his knees, and he is whispering his murmuring. He's saying, Lord, listen to my words. He has some sighing, some meditations in his heart that he is, that he is calling out to God each and every day. True prayer, true prayer is deeper than our words. 
a true prayer is a thoughtful outflowing from our life and from our heart to Almighty God. Outflowing from our heart. And we need to be careful as, as Christians. I love the passage of Scripture in Psalms chapter 90, verse 12 that says, Teach us to number our days. That literally means that we should take an inventory each of our days, each and every day. When we go to the Lord in prayer every morning, we should just carefully think through our day and include God in every one of our plans. Dear Lord Jesus, this is what I'm planning to do today. God, I pray that you'll bless my efforts. I've got to go here. I've got to go there. I've got to do this. I've got to take care of this person. I've got to pray with this person. I've got to run to the grocery store in just a little while. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. We should carefully and methodically go through our day with God and ask him to bless each and every part of it. We should carve out time each and every day to spend with our Lord and Savior, but we need to prepare. We need to prepare our hearts before we rush into his presence. We need to make preparations. It's the most important time of our day as we spend time with our Lord and Savior. We can see that the psalmist did not want to waste his words. He was determined that his prayers were going to be uh, prepared and his prayers were going to reach God and God would understand that he had spent some time thinking about what he was praying about. We need to be prepared as we go and pray. I can remember uh, Christy and I, my wife and I, being invited to our first college football game not too long ago. And we were really college football fans. We watched it on television. We just didn't understand college football culture. And so the game started at 5 o'clock. And so we decided, you know, we'll probably leave the house about 4.30. You know, it takes 30 minutes to get started. Well, no big deal. We'll walk in and we'll catch the kickoff. We'll stay for a little while. No big deal. Well, we, we drive over there in just plain street clothes. No maroon and white. No cowbell. We just go on over there. And we, guess what? We get there. We can't find a parking place. We have to walk for two miles to get to the gate. And once we get to the gate, we get in, but we have missed the kickoff. We've missed the first five, almost ten minutes of the first quarter. And I'm thinking, okay, we're missing something here. All these folks sitting around us are wearing different colors. They're wearing white over here and maroon over here. I mean, you could tell that we did not belong there. I mean, we were sticking out like a sore thumb. We just had plain street clothes on. People looking at us like, where are you from? I mean, we didn't, we didn't know anything about tailgating. We didn't know anything about any of that. So we learned a valuable lesson. The next time we were invited to, to a football game, guess what we did? We went online and figured out what colors everybody was wearing. <laughs> we went and bought us a cowbell. We found some friends to tailgate with. We got there three hours early. We prepared to go to that college football game so we could enjoy it and get the most out of our time while we were at that college football game. Guys, the same is true when spending time with God. We need to spend more time preparing ourselves to enter the presence of of Almighty God. We need to be more prepared when we enter the presence and make our pleas to God and, and praise Him. We need to be more prepared as Christians and make prayer a priority in our life once again. Number two, we see that prayer uh, is also a personal relationship. Look in verse number two. Uh, prayer is a personal relationship. We're going to make it a priority. We've got to go to the next level and understand it's more personal than most Christians make it. Verse number two says, Pay attention to the sound of my cry. My king and my God. You know, the, the, prepos the, the personal pronoun my is mentioned seven times in these three verses. David meant what he was saying when he was, when he was writing these words. My king and my God. Do you live like God is really your king? Do you live like God is really your God? Is he that personal with you? Are you that personal with him? Prayer is not an unheard conversation with an unknown God. Prayer is not an unheard conversation with an unknown God. We're not praying to a God of wood or a God of stone. We're praying to a God that created the heavens and the earth. We're, talking, we're praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph. We're praying to the God that led the Israelites out of Egypt, that opened the Red Sea, and they walked across on dry land. The scripture says that there's a wall of water on their left, and on the right is a cross. We're talking to a God that closed the Red Sea back on Pharaoh's army and demolished it as they walked across. We also, we're talking to the God that moved in the prophets' hearts to write hundreds of years before Christ was born and prophesy uh, and predict the birth of Jesus Christ all, all the way to the place of where he, would, he was born. We are spending time with a God that sent his one and only son to this earth. And when John the Baptist baptized him and the clouds opened up, Almighty God spoke down and said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. 
We are talking to the God each and every day as Christians that heal the lame, that calls the, the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. We are communicating with the God that loved us so much that allowed his son to die on the cross for our sin. We're praying to the God that rose his son from the dead on the third day. That's the reason we're here today, because we believe that as a congregation and we worship him on the first day of the week. We are praying to that God. We're praying to that God that is alive and well. We need to understand that we're not praying to a God that is powerless. We're praying to a God that wants to hear from his people a personal conversation with his child, a personal conversation with his children. A personal conversation is not one that's just one-sided. A personal conversation, there's thought put into this conversation. And we, as, a, as, as Christians, we need to understand that when the psalmist wrote in the 23rd Psalm, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. When Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew chapter 26, he cried out and he said, my father, my father. He's looking up to his heavenly father and it's a personal conversation. You know, there's few things in life that I enjoy, that I enjoy. There are few things in life that I enjoy more than being a father. I love being a father. I love being a dad. I love my children. I love spending time with my children. I love talking to my children. I love hearing on a conversation with my children. I want to know what's going on in the world. I want to know the good. I want to know the not so good. I want to know what's happening in their life. When they come home from school, uh, a lot of times uh, uh, my wife will turn into the driveway, and I'm usually at the end of our long driveway in a little shop doing some work. And usually what they'll do is they'll get out of the car, they'll ask mommy to stop, and they'll both get out of the car, and they'll have a foot race to the shop to see who can get there first. And I'll just be standing there with my arms open, with my knees on the ground, just waiting for them to run into my arms and give them a great big hug. Many times what they'll do, they'll run as fast as they can. They'll tackle me, and we both end up on the ground. But I don't care. I love it. I love being a dad. I love being there for them anytime they need me. But I like to ask questions. What I'll usually do is send one of them to the house and say, look, you could get started on your homework. I'm going to hang out with, with, with Jonah or Noah, one or the other, and I'm just going to hang out with them and talk with them. And so I'll start asking them questions, and I had to get creative in my questions because as parents, you know that kids generally don't talk about school very much. You ask them, hey, son, how was school? Oh, it's good. It's just good. I'm like, okay, son, you've been there for like almost eight hours. It's got to be more than just good. You have to come up with creative questions. You have to ask questions like, son, what happened today that made you happy? What happened today that made you sad? What did you experience today that you liked the most? Most of the time you get recess on that one. But it's so, it's so much fun to come up with creative questions to get them to talking to you. For some reason, it's hard for children, or they just, for boys anyway, I don't know, I don't have any girls, but for boys, they just don't talk a whole lot. For you to have girls, they may come home chatting all the time, I'm not sure, but I have to pry words out of my children. And sometimes it's that way, uh, it, sometimes it's that way with Christians praying to God. For some reason, we just can't get the words out. But I know, I know that if I love to talk to my children, I know that if, as me as a father, if I love to hear from my children, why would I think any less of our Heavenly Father? Why would He be any different? I believe God wants to hear from us even though He already knows what's going on. God wants to hear from us. Our Heavenly Father wants us to converse with Him each and every day, uh, details about our life, and tell Him what's going on, and tell Him how we're feeling. God wants us to be honest with Him and spend time with Him and make this a time of a personal relationship. Now, if you're one of those people that I was talking about earlier that only spend 10 minutes or less in prayer each and every day. Your relationship is not where it should be with Almighty God. It's not that you're lost. It's not that, that, that God doesn't love you. But God wants so much more for you than what you're giving Him each and every day. You're just, getting on the, you're just getting in the beginning of having a relationship with Christ if you don't spend an ample amount of time in prayer each and every day. I want to do a little exercise. I want to ask everybody to close your eyes and just imagine. Uh, I want everybody just to bow your heads and close your eyes and imagine that God is speaking to you. And you're in this category that you don't pray very much. God is speaking these words to you. I miss you. It's been a long time since we talked. Your voice calling my name 
brings me great delight. I simply miss hearing from you. I miss being included in your life. Why do I miss you so much? I created you and I loved you before you were born. The day you came into the world, I was there. Every moment of your life, I've been there. When you're afraid, when you're angry, when you're sad, I've been there. Did you know I'm with you every single moment of the day, ready to help, ready to listen, ready to comfort, ready to give, ready to give peace, ready to forgive. I know your pain, I know your heartaches, and it's during these times I want to hear from you the most. You see and hear me every day. You may miss my calling sometimes. I speak to you in the quiet moments. I show you myself in the rain and the sun and creation, all the world that surrounds you. I want you to know I'm always with you. Patience is one of my traits. I will always be reminding you of my great love and forgiveness. When you're ready to talk, I'm here. Everybody look this way. God is calling out for his people to come to him in prayer all the time. He's there waiting all the time. He just wants that personal relationship with you. He wants that personal relationship to grow. He wants it to be a healthy relationship so you can make an impact in this world. We need to understand that God wants to speak to his children just like you speak to your children. He wants you to spend time with him, quality time with him. In order to make our prayer priority, it has to be more of a personal relationship with our God. And finally, if we're going to make prayer priority, we have to pray with a positive outlook. And Christians, I want us to understand that Praying with a positive outlook makes all the difference with the world, in the world as a Christian. Look in verse number 3 as the psalmist says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I plead my case to you and watch expectantly. Uh, some, some versions say uh, I direct my, my prayers to you in some translations. But in the morning, I plead my case to you and I watch expectantly. When we pray with a positive outlook, it makes all the difference in the world. You see, this psalmist did not pray wondering if God was going to move in his life. This psalmist prayed knowing that God was going to move, and he was just waiting and watching for him expectantly to move. This type of praying makes a big difference because all limits and expectations are removed when we pray knowing God is going to move. As Christians, we need to pray expecting God to move in and through our life, not wondering, not praying like God doesn't have any power, not praying like God can't solve this situation in my life, not praying that God is going to answer this prayer, but we should pray in confidence, knowing that Almighty God is going to move in our life at some point, and by faith, we're going to wait until he moves at his time to make that difference in our life. Because we understand as Christians that sometimes we'll pray for something, and it may be years before it actually happens and takes place. It may, be, it may be years before God actually moves in what we're praying for and who we're praying for, but we have to understand as Christians that's part of trusting Almighty God, having faith in Him and praying and expecting, not being discouraged, but always praying and waiting for God to move. In the mid-1800s, uh, D.L. Moody uh, tells a story of a young man who came to him and, and, and shared with him that when he was uh, uh, just a teenager... Uh, he wanted jo to join the American military and go and fight in the, the American-Mexican War uh, sometime around the mid-1800s. He wanted to enlist in the Army and go fight for his country, so he went to ask for his mother's permission. His mother, his mother said, absolutely not. You cannot go fight in that war. He said, Mom, why can't I go fight in the war? She said, because you're not a Christian. There's no way that I'm going to allow you to sign up and enlist in the Army unless you become a Christian. So this young man began to mull over this, and, and uh, she pleaded with him uh, that he would become a Christian, but he just never would make that decision, and she saw that he was resolved, and he was dedicated, and he was going to go serve his country. And she said, son, I need to talk to you one more time before you go serve your country. So he came to her, and she took off a watch that she had on her arm. She said, son, I want to give you this watch. This was your dad's watch that he gave to me right before he died, and I want you to put, on this, put this watch on, and I want you to know 
that at 12 o'clock every day, I'm going to pray for you. I want you to know, when you look at that watch and you say it's 12 o'clock, you know that I'm praying for you. Then she took her Bible, her personal Bible, outlined many passages of Scripture in it and put all types of notes in the Bible about how to become a Christian, what it meant to be a Christian, and how to follow Christ. So reluctantly, this young man put on the watch and took the Bible with him as he went to serve his country. He had no intentions of reading that Bible. He had no intentions of looking at that watch, but he took it with him. About five months later, as he was serving his country, they were on this long, weary march somewhere in some desert plain of Mexico, and he said that he was just completely worn out, he was completely tired, and he was just completely exhausted. And he looked at his watch, and it was 12 o'clock. He said, I know my mom's praying for me. And he was moved within his spirit to go to the commanding officer and said, could you stop just for a moment and give us a little break? And he said, to his surprise, the commanding officer said, yes, let's just stop for just a little bit and take a break. Well, he retreated by himself over behind a tree somewhere in the plains of Mexico, and he said, dear God, I don't know what it means to be a Christian, but I know that I want to be saved by the God of my mother. I want, him to, I want God to save me. I want to follow you for the rest of my life. He came back a born-again believer, and his life was changed, all because his mother prayed in a positive, expecting way. Now, here's what it looks like to pray in a positive, expecting way as a Christian. I want to use Brother Herbert Junkin as an example because Brother Herbert used to always have this saying. He would always say this. He would say that, Christians must pray expecting God to move and be willing to be the hands and feet that answer those prayers. As Christians, when we pray and ask for God to use us, we must be willing to, pull up, to push up our sleeves and be willing to go and be the, the method that God uses to answer those prayers. The mother, she gave him a watch. She gave him a Bible. She was planning ahead to cause him to understand what it meant to be a sinner, to understand that her son came to know Christ because she was positive and she was proactive. As Christians, we do need to wait for God's timing, but at the same time, I think God wants us to be proactive in bringing his kingdom to this earth as we pray and as we follow his will. It's so important as Christians to pray with a positive outlook. Never stop loving, always keep praying. Never stop being kind. Always keep praying. Never stop loving that wayward child. Always keep praying for him and be proactive for him to come to Christ. Never stop asking God to move in your life. Always be praying. Always be expecting because God can move at any moment. God can move at any time, any moment that he sees fit. We must pray proactively for God's will to come to this earth and be willing to be that motivation and to be that person that will cause that prayer to be answered Always pray for your children. Never give up. As long as, as everyone has breath, as long as everyone has life, there is still hope for a lost person to come to know Christ. As long as a person has breath, as long as a person has life, there's time for a wayward child to come back to Christ. As long as a person has breath in his life, there is hope. Never give up. Always be praying. Make prayer a priority in your life. Prepare yourself to pray. Make it a personal relationship and, and make sure that you're praying with positive impact. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to this time in our worship service, that uh, Lord, we, uh, Lord, we think about what your word has said. And, and God, we think about how we need to improve in our prayer life. God, I pray there's some here this morning that, uh, Lord, that, that feel led to come to this altar and pray and say, God, I just want to recommit my life and, and make prayer a more important part of my life. God, I pray you give them courage to step out and do that. God, I pray for those here this morning that have been praying for someone for years and they're weary and they're, they're tired because they've just been hoping and praying that a change would happen in a person's life or, or maybe someone would be healed and it just never happened. God, I pray that you would renew their strength this morning. Lord, give them new energy and new enthusiasm to keep praying and to never give up. But God, I pray during this time that you'd have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to have a hymn of invitation for you to respond to the message of God's word. You may be here this morning as a Christian, and you say, Brother David, I'm just going to tell you, I don't even spend 10 minutes a day in prayer. I don't. And I, I realize that I need to get more serious about my walk with Christ. Why don't you make that commitment today right where you stand, that you're going to carve out time in your life to get serious with God each and every day and make it more personal. There may be someone here this morning that you know there's someone in this congregation 
that you need to go with and take by the hand and go pray with, right where they stand, or come and bring them to the altar and say, could we just pray together this morning? There's something going on, and I just want to pray with you. Then you may be here this morning, and you need to make a first-time commitment to Christ. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is reaching out to you and wants to give you the gift of eternal life. All you have to do is take it. If this is the first time that you've, that you've heard the good news of Jesus Christ, you can come and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for the very first time. But there may just be someone here this morning that just needs to come to this altar and pray. However the Lord leads, won't you step out this morning and have the courage if God lives in your heart as we stand and sing. Mm-hmm.